Okay, this is lesson 1.2, day one, and we're talking about graphing. Equations of vertical and horizontal lines. If I say x equals 2, do you get that that's just a vertical or a horizontal line? But which one is it? Easy to forget. It is vertical. Here's the way I would find it. Everybody put a dot where x is 2. Just one dot on one of the axes, the x-axis preferably, where x is 2. You have a dot somewhere in this neighborhood. Okay, now it has to go through that, right? And the only question is if it should go up and down or left and right. And left and right would go through all kinds of other x's like x equals 3. That's not where x is 2. That is where x is 2. Okay, so up and down for x and then y, of course, is the other way. So if I have y equals 3, here's 3, y equals 3 would go through there. They are a little confusing when you think of it this way. The y equals 3 is parallel to the x-axis, kind of counterintuitive that way. And x equals 2, this one, is parallel to the y-axis, even though it's an x equals thing. That can be a little confusing. All right, this next part is just basically saying that if you have really done it right, if you've graphed it correctly, then the points on your graph will actually match and work in the equation. Let me give you an example. If I have graphed this correctly and the spot 2 comma 4 is on my parabola, do you get that that 2 and that 4 have to go in for the x and the y and make the equation true? That's all the fundamental graphing principle is saying, is your points then have to work in the equation. All right, next thing, finding the intercepts. All right, we know the x-intercepts are where it touches x, duh. So if it goes like this, do you get there are three x-intercepts, and then one y-intercept. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so next step is, what if I don't give you a picture? What if I want the x-intercepts? I have to know this part. The x-intercepts are where y is 0. And conversely, the y-intercepts are where x is 0. Notice it says set x equal to 0 and solve for y. I want to do a practice of that right now. So for instance, let's say I had this. y equals x squared plus uh, 12x. Now, I don't know what that looks like. If I had to graph it, that would be a pain. So to find the x-intercept, I'm just going to set y what? Equals 0. So then, I have just made this equal to 0. I'm finding the x-intercepts right now. So now, how do I solve that? That's one of the top 20 skills. That's the reason we do that stuff, because that's supposed to be fresh in your mind. I know, last year in higher algebra, you probably are going to blame your teacher. You never learned that. Oh, yes, you did. I know you learned this. You factored it like this. If you can make it two sets of parentheses, cool, but this one's actually even simpler. What factors out of both of those? an x. And then what is left behind when I pull an x out of both of them? x plus 12. That is factoring. That is one of the top 20 skills to be able to factor. If you can do that, this class will be easier. Okay, factoring is huge. It's going to come up all the time. Factor, I have a little rule. If you can factor it, you should. Okay, so if I see this and I think, oh, I can factor that, you probably should. To solve the problem, it'll probably help. And it really does in this case. This is factored now. So now, when you have this, it's called the zero product property. These things are being multiplied. This times that, equaling zero. Which means that either x equals zero, this first part, or x plus 12 equals zero. And now I just have to solve them both. This one's already solved. And this one I subtract 12. x equals negative 12. There. And what the heck was I doing in the first place? Trying to find the what's? X-intercepts. So I set Y equal to 0, and I solved it. And I factored it, and in the process of factoring, I had to then break it up into two parts. And here was one answer, and here was the other. So again, on a graph, I know it touches right there, and I know it touches at negative 12, like over here. The rest of the graph I'm really not sure of, although I do know it's a parabola. So it's probably going to be something like that. But all that really matters was find the X-intercepts. I did it. Okay. Now, this one's kind of easy because the y-intercept, I can see it. I just graphed it. I can see the y-intercept now. What's the y-intercept? 
zero. But if I hadn't known that, if I hadn't graphed it yet, and the first question hadn't been x-intercept, it had been what's the y-intercept, I would have taken this original problem and said the y-intercept is where what? x equals zero. So I just stick in a zero here and here. And I would have had y equals zero squared plus 12 times zero, which is just zero. And that would have been a lot faster than graphing it, right? Okay, so to find the y-intercept, you set x equals zero. To find the x-intercept, you set y equals zero. That's it. You, found, you just now have got another point on your test that we're going to have. All right. These are graphing puzzles, and all, although awesome and uh, neat, given the amount of time we have, I need to cover something else instead. Um, here is a type of problem uh, that I just gave you a glimpse of the other day, and I didn't ever explain it, so I want to need to go back to that. Do you remember these? X, where X is bigger than 3. So give me an example of an answer. 4. 5, 400, a lot of those. Anything's bigger than 3, okay? How about 3 itself? Does 3 work? No, because 3 isn't bigger than 3. Okay, this is kind of going to fall short when I'm trying to graph x and y. Do you get how I need an x and a y? So all we do is put x comma y where x is greater than 3. Now, what does that mean? If I don't say anything about y, are there any restrictions then on y? So y could be anything as long as the only rule I got to follow, x has to be bigger than 3. So then that begs the question, where is x equal to 3? Ah, I remember that. We started the hour with that. So that's where x equals 3. And why did I make it a dotted line? Because it can't be 3. It has to be bigger than 3. All right, and now bigger than means to the right of, there. Every point that's to the right of that line satisfies my equation. This is honors pre-calc. Do you think the problem would be that easy? No, of course not. But we could make it a little harder by saying something like this. And y, oh, let's go like this negative 2 is less than or equal to y is less than 8. Okay, well, I leave the x is greater than 3 up there, but now I've got to also add this restriction that y has to be between negative 2 and 8. Would you agree y equals negative 2 and y equals 8 become important lines then? But which one of them did I just mess up? So easy to do, and now... Because this is Marzano-style grading, I would have to mark the whole thing wrong because I just did something wrong. Yes. Yes. The 8 one, this one, is not or equal to, and therefore it must be a dotted line for the 8. So I'm going to go back through and just touch and try to make a few little dots on the dotted line there. Okay, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Just talking about the lines right now. Okay, now, do you agree that the lines are written in the right spot? Now, how about the shading? Should this, for the Ys, should we be shading in between them, or should we be shading above and below them? In other words, should it be like this? Okay, because Y is supposed to be bigger than the negative 2. So, yeah, I've shaded the wrong way, so I'll, whoa. Sorry, hold on. Undo. Oh, this is awful. Sorry, my alignment's off, and so therefore everything got messed up there. Okay. Sorry. Once the alignment is off, it becomes very difficult to do things, undo things. So I'm just going to grab these things and delete them. That'll probably let me do that. So. these guys down here. How about if I just drag them off to the side? That's even faster. Okay, sorry. I shaded. I did it on purpose, but I thought I'd be able to just undo it if the alignment weren't off. I probably could have. So now I'm going to shade in between. And now think about this. It doesn't say it, 
but is this more of a union or more of an intersection kind of a situation? Intersection. And therefore, it's only where they're double shaded. So therefore, in here with dotted line here, dotted line here, and solid line there. My dots got awful close together. That's supposed to be a dotted line there. And then shade it in here is my final answer. And if I were turning this in on a test, I would absolutely take the time to go back and erase the areas that I had shaded that I don't want to act like they're, they're counting. Because if you double shade something and you single shade something and you leave it all on the paper, it all you're saying it all counts. So if I'd have left this in here like down there, it would have been wrong. And there's no partial credit. So for those of you that are freshmen, raise your hand if you're a freshman. All right. You're probably not used to this then. This is a Marzano style grading. Marzano style means that uh, there is, it's much more complicated than this, but there will be typically, if you can get 75% of the easy problems and 75% of the hard problems right, you will get an A. And that seems really generous. But on the other hand, there's no partial credit. So like you had that, that problem right there and you had a dotted line where it's supposed to be solid, no credit for it. Okay, so you've got to be really careful on your test. You don't have that many problems. Typical tests will have either 8 or 12 questions. That's not bad. I mean, in the old days, in the pre-calc, it would be like 30 questions. Okay, so you got not that many questions. You just got to be really careful and meticulous so that you don't allow yourself to make too many dumb mistakes. All right, I'm going to give you one more like that, and let's see if you can pull this off. Uh, let's say I say x comma y where, and use that slashy line thing because they do that sometimes. Uh, x has to be less than or equal to 0 and y has to be back. Negative 3 is less than or equal to y. I wrote that backwards. If you want to rewrite it the other way, feel free. Just be careful. Okay, so this one, I would have been thinking x and y axis just like last time. x equals 0 is this line where it runs. Hmm, that's a weird one. x equals 0. If it's right there, how am I supposed to know if it's up, down, or left, right? Then you might go back to the whole, is x equals 0 like the x axis? Or like the y axis? It's like the y axis. Okay, so it's like this. That's x equals 0. Okay, now I made it. Dotted. Should I have made it dotted? No, solid because it says or equal to. So I'll fill that in. It's easy to fill in a dotted line. No big deal there. Okay, now less than that means shade on this side. Of it. You with me so far? Okay, then the other part. I'm going to rewrite this. Y greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, so here's negative 3. Here's a line through that. Should it be solid or dotted? Solid. Okay, and then greater than or equal to means shade above. So I'm going to just shade in the area above here. And then really, I ought to erase all the other stuff like that. And even this line that's running over here, why am I erasing this line? Because it doesn't have y's that are greater than or equal to, let me think. They don't have y's that are greater than or equal to negative 3. Um, no, no. They have y's greater than or equal to negative 3. Sorry. They don't have x's that are less than or equal to 0. That's it. That's why I needed to erase that part. So, And why am I erasing this part? Even though it fix, fits one of the parts, it doesn't fit the other part. That little area there is the only area that fits both. Any questions on that? All right. So now, let's move on to the actual... Now, it says, notice, I added some little things in here because this file, did you notice that it's a day one, day two, and day three? This is assignment for today and tomorrow and the next day, okay? So what you see right here, the next thing you come to is not your homework. It's the notes that would happen tomorrow. 
So we have to keep going until we find, scroll through your iPad file you downloaded there, until you find the one that says beginning of homework for 1.2 day one. Okay, I tried to throw in those little helpers to show you where the homework starts. Okay, so this is our first problem. It's on the Seafoam Blue page. Would you please check with the kid across from you that they are in the right spot? If they aren't, help them find it. All right, cool, thank you. All right, so now uh, I want to right away tell you that the homework is, would be a little bit long as is. So we are going to skip problem 20. You may cross off problem 20, although an excellent problem. I am going to try to keep your homework reasonably sized, and it was a little long. Okay, and besides the, that, you need to be working on that little project still. So that adds to your homework. And any top 20s that you're weak on, you should be going and checking the video numbers for each problem that you don't understand and learning those things too. So, All right, here we go. K, 6 over K, comma K, where K is all of that. Holy smokes, what on earth does that mean? Well, let's just take one thing at a time. Let's say k is 1, and then we'll say k is negative 1. If k is 1, I stick that in here, and do you get I get 6 over 1, comma 1? All I did was take, if k is 1, I stuck that into the little equation. 6 over k means 6 over 1, which means 6, comma 1. Where is 6, comma 1? Over 6, up 1, and unfortunately, the graph on this only goes to... Oh, it does go to 6. My bad, I just couldn't see it. My eyes are too old. There we go. 6 comma 1. All right, is that the answer for the whole thing? No, i got to keep going. So now I'm going to stick in k equals negative 1. I'm doing the second part of this right here. So if k is negative 1, I go 6 over negative 1 comma negative 1. And that would be negative 6 comma negative 1. So i got to go find that. Negative 6 comma negative 1. That's two of my 12 points I'm going to need to graph. Now I do positive 2, and I stick it in here, and I get 6 over 2, comma 2, and that's going to be 3, comma 2. And I'm going to graph that, 3, comma 2. Now, is this going to make any pattern? It probably make a pattern, but I don't expect you to memorize it. It's just you got to understand how to make these, how to make these points. Now I'm going to stick in negative 2. If I use negative 2, I'm going to have 6 over negative 2, comma, negative 2. And I'll make negative 3, comma, negative 2. Negative 3, negative 2. There we go. Etc. All right. Skipping down to the next one just because it's a little tougher. Square root of, does that say j? Square root of j? Okay, square root of j, comma j. Okay. Well, the first one, square root of 0, comma 0. Of course, also known as 0, comma 0. That's one of my spots. Okay, then I stick in this point, 1, and I see what I get. I get square root of 1, comma 1. And that's the same as 1, comma 1, etc. I think these shouldn't be too hard for you. It's just about learning how to interpret these, and they're all in which form? That number line form? The interval form? Set notation. Set builder notation if you want to be really official, but how do I accept that set notation as an answer? All right. So you got a few more there in set notation here. There. Notice number 10 doesn't say anything about the x's. If it doesn't say anything about the x's, there's no limit on the x's. X's could be every x. But y's have to be less than or equal to 5. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This does have a limit on the x's. I just didn't see it at first. It's 2 for the x. x is always 2. Okay, if x is always 2, then that means effectively it's like there's a line right there. Right? x can and is always 2. But notice I don't shade on either side of it. It's just that line. Okay, now where y is uh, less than or equal to 5. So here's where y is 5. And here would be a line. And do I want to go above or below that? Below. And then 
if I'm going below that and I'm going to shade it all in, I really don't want to shade it all in, right? Because only the places where they both are true, like an overlap, this is kind of like an intersection problem, is where it's going to work. So basically it's going to work underneath here, so it's going to work on that little part of this line. Notice it can't go above that, so I should now erase this and erase the top part of the line. And there we go. I erased just a smidge too much there, but I hope you got the idea. It's just a line in that case. Okay. Now, I encourage you to, uh, oh, on these last ones, you have to actually write, it's like they give you the answer and you got to write what the question is. It's kind of like Jeopardy. So they've given you the answer, you figure out the question. All right. Now, um, these last two, don't overthink them. They are incredibly easy. They're just making sure you remember how to do, how to graph x equals negative 2. And y equals whatever. Okay. Now, if you kept going, you'd be starting to do tomorrow's homework. Because this is the little hint that says start of homework for 1.2, day 2. So this one file that we have downloaded here is going to handle the notes and the homework for today and tomorrow and the next day. Yes, sir. All right, I understand, but like like this green, the seafoam, seafoam blue page, it says from 4 to 20. We didn't do from 4 to 20. You, you have to know that what used to be, this, these homework assignments in the very first year of this class used to be that long. You had to do problems 4 through 20 under those directions. Since then, they've cut out a whole bunch of problems, okay? I understand. Just don't overthink it. I know the next one says the directions are, I get it, Miss. Look this way, please. I'm talking to you still. I understand what you said about the directions. I'm just saying, don't take it that seriously. If this page right here, okay, says 20, it's got 22 through 30, but it has these directions above it, use the directions that are above it. Don't overthink that. Yes, use those directions on the whole page. All right. So like here, it says 31 through 36. There is no 36. I don't care. I'm going to still do 31 through 36. Don't want to use these directions. And they aren't that complicated. Graph the line. So there's two problems to graph. And I know, it says 32. Change it to 33. You'll have to be able to roll with that kind of stuff. Okay? I understand but that it's slightly off, but the good part is it's because we cut out a bazillion problems from the first year because the homework assignments were way too long. Okay. That's all I've got for you for today.